Good evening everybody and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We're doing things slightly differently tonight in that it is being live streamed through Facebook and at the same time Zoom is also open because what we're going to do after this time whenever um, Facebook closes down going to be doing our prayer time on Zoom. Um, hopefully those who want to join and have got those details um, if you haven't then you can let me know for the first wee while you might see me going backwards and forwards just glancing at the screen to the side just as people come into um, the Zoom and as people do come in just in case you come in just to let you know as well I will hit you on to mute just so that the sound doesn't cut across between the, the two broadcasts but we'll do we'll do our Bible study first um, so if you're on Zoom you'll just have to listen the way you do on Facebook you can wave at each other and you can see each other you can see me um, and then we'll come together after that. Um, so just let me bring somebody else in via Zoom. And again, I'll do the same. Just put them on mute. If by any chance anyone sees me suddenly turning around, uh, you'll, you'll know why, um, why we're doing it. But it's great to be able to do this tonight. It's been great to be able to come across the different platforms and to be able to have our Bible study and then a time of prayer together. So just as we start, let me let us all pause, um, just as I lead us all in prayer at this time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we come again to you, giving you thanks for the day gone by. Um, yes, Lord, it's been a bit of a miserable day outside, like we said this morning. The rain has been constant. Uh, but we just thank you that we have rain, that we have that water from whenever we need it. We thank you that we have the sunshine when we need it. We just thank you that we have your blessing and your presence. Lord, you are so good to us. Um, in the midst of everything that's going on, we know that we are not alone. We know we are not abandoned, but that you are very firmly with us, uh, looking after us, guiding us, protecting us, helping us. And Father, for that, we are so grateful. So Lord, tonight as we pause, as we come to your word, just help us really to pause Pause from the busyness of everything else that's been going on. Pause from maybe from the monotony of it as well. And just to be able to spend this time at your word. Um, to be refreshed by you. To be challenged by you. Just to be close to you. And to know you with us. So Lord we thank you. And continue with us now we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Um, last week we started into Hebrews chapter 11. And we finished off round about at the end of verse 13. Now, at the end of verse 13, it talks about, um, this was um, Abraham and Sarah, just talking about um, how all these people died, still believing what God had promised them, but they did not receive what was promised, um, but they sought from a distance and welcomed it. Uh, so we're paying up from there. So let me read to you at this stage, Hebrews 11, and I'm going to read verses 14 down to verse 22. Let's hear God's word. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. They have longed for the country they came They have not longed for... If they have longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to call them their, for them to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham realised Reason that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessing for the future to his sons, Jacob and Esau. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently, that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. He even commanded them to take his bones with them when they left. We'll pause there at the end of verse 22. 
just as we picked up with that in, in verse 14, it says there are obviously people who say such things are looking forward to heavenly country. It just reminds us of the fact that God calls us to look forward. Um, yes, all of us look back at times and we reflect upon our past life. We reflect upon our past actions. But God has called us now, once we start our journey of faith with him, into something completely different. Into a relationship with him. And for that, he calls us to look forward and not back. If you think about um, some of the things that Jesus says about, you know, when you've got your hand on the plow and you're looking forward, you don't look back. Uh, and that, that, that sense that we look forward to what God is calling us to. And this connects through very much to verse 13, to what it talked about Abraham and, and Sarah, you know, not being able to see what God had promised them, but knowing that it was there, they were looking forward. And it's continuing that line of thought of we are looking forward to what God has prepared for us. And, and verse 15 shows us that faith, shows us um, how they are. It says, if they had longed for the country they had come from, they could have gone back. So there's nothing to stop them from turning around and saying, oh God, I don't know what you're doing. Um, we seem to be wandering around here doing absolutely nothing. Let, let's just go back. In fact, the children of Israel said that at one stage when it came to Egypt. Whenever they had left, they said, oh, let's go back to Egypt. At least there we had food. At least there we had, we had water. Um, yes, we lived in depression. You know, they longed to go back because they didn't see what God had prepared for them. But Abraham did see and he looked forward to what is put in verse 16 as a heavenly homeland. He says, that is why God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. That's reassuring us that God, even in, at that time, had heaven prepared for those who will follow him. And that heaven still waits for us. That whenever our time comes and that we are called to go home to be with him, that he has that city ready and waiting for us. That he has our place waiting for us. He just wants us to keep looking forward. Obviously, the writer of Hebrews realises that these people are struggling, struggling with everything that's going on around them. And he wants to try and encourage them and reassure them. So he gives them a number of examples. Abraham, he's ready, he's ready to talk to them. And then he talks again about Abraham, and particularly about the challenges that Abraham faced. So, I mean, I'm sure all of us, as we read the story of Abraham, you know, you, you do stop and wonder at times, why did God tell him to take his son and sacrifice him? But then we realise that that's symbolic of what's to come with Christ. Whenever God sacrifices his son for us. And we realise that God is declaring very much through Abraham about who his people are. Um, and what he will do for them. Uh, and how he will do that. And Abraham and Isaac, that, that gives us a, a reflection of what is to come. A reflection of that good times whenever God will do so much for us, whenever God will um, sacrifice his own son so that we can have the forgiveness of our sins. And that's why he says in there um, about how, um, you know, he, he, re he saw that God would, he could reason that um, if his son did die, that God would bring him back to life again. And in fact, in a sense, he says he did feel that God brought him back again because of what had happened, because of how through what happened and, and through the substitution of that ram, um, he received Isaac back to him again, the son who was promised, the son through whom he would have that, the fulfilment of your, your descendants will fill this earth. And through that, we have that recognition that, you know, we deserve to die because of our sins, but yet... When we look around, it's not a ram caught by its horns in a thicket that's behind us. It's the Son of God willingly sending himself to the cross and staying on the cross so that we can have our sins forgiven. And that should bolster our faith. That should encourage us for what God has done for us. And you know, and whenever you, you know, you're, you're struggling, be assured about that. Um, you know, it's it, it's funny and it's funny, strange that in this, um, the writer reminds us of something. 
In verse 20 he says, It was by faith that Isaac promised blessing for the future to his sons, Jacob and Esau. You know, we quite often focus on Jacob because Esau it goes off in a different track, but Esau was blessed as well. Um, same as God blessed, blessed Ishmael as well. Uh, and we know that that's, that's a line through which other things come into this world and, and there's different problems for um, the Israelites through that. Um, but we've got to remember how there is a blessing on so many people. And, and God did say that Abraham would be the means of blessing for this world. And that, that does challenge us. But at the same time, we have to remember that image that there's only one substitute uh, who is Christ. There's no other way by which we come to God. Uh, and that in itself is, is so, for some people, is so challenging because some people say, oh, but they're good people. You know, that person's not a bad person. Oh, what, what harm have they ever done? Who have they ever hurt? Bible doesn't teach that there's more than one way to heaven. There was one substitute um, who was that ram who died in the place of Isaac. There is one son, Jesus, who dies on the cross for our sins. That is the only means of forgiveness. Jesus said it himself in John 14. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes on to the Father but by me. So even in these blessings that we see, we've got to remember that there's only that one way by which our relationship is made right with God. The writer goes on and tells us all the things. He talks about Jacob, um, how he blessed all of Joseph's sons. So the blessing that God promised continues down through the generations. Uh, and even Joseph, as he's about to leave, you know, when he's going to die, he said to his, his, his family, take my bones from this place. He didn't want to be buried in Egypt. He wanted to be buried in a place of blessing. And then it continues on down into verse 23. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. Can you imagine um, being in that situation of Moses' parents? We don't know very much about them. We know that they were from the tribe of Levi. So we know that from the priestly tribe, um, which is so appropriate for Moses, we know that at that time, Pharaoh had declared that all the male children be killed because he's concerned about the, the Israelites becoming too powerful in Egypt and overthrowing them if they decided to rebel. So a good way of controlling that in those days, kill off all the male children. If the, main children, if the male children are killed off, then they can't do any harm. You know, it, it kills off the line. And most parents trust it says they saw that God had given them an unusual child. They were not afraid to disobey the king's commands. I don't think when it says unusual child, it means that Moses to look at, looked at any differently. But I believe that God was speaking to Moses' parents saying that this child is special. I'm going to do something special with him. And as a result of that, and because they trusted God, they defied um, the authority that was there and they hid their son just like the the midwives the Israelite midwives defied the pharaoh and even though they delivered male babies they wouldn't kill them uh, and they said oh the, the, the Israelite women they're, they're, they're very strong they're, they're very resilient you know they've delivered a baby before we get there so we don't know what they've had and the baby's not there so um, you know the baby's gone you know how they trusted God and defied in that situation. Um, you know, they had faith as well. But Moses' parents had faith. And it goes, goes on to talk about Moses and his faith. Verse 24. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt. For we, he was looking ahead to his great reward. Moses in that sense sets us a good example. He looks beyond earthly rewards to heavenly rewards. As the way the New Living Translation puts it. Um, instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. You know Moses had in front of him 
a different lifestyle laid out for him. He's taken in and adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. He could have had anything in the land. He could have ended up being in a position of power in that land. But instead he realises that he should be out with his people. Um, yes, he does things which are foolish at times. Yes, he does things which are wrong. Um, whenever the Egyptian is beating the Israelite, he steps in and he kills the Egyptian. He buries the body and he thinks he's got away with it and he hasn't and he flees from the land because he's scared. Um, but he was looking at, at things in a different way. He was looking towards the heavenly reward is what the author is trying to tell us here. Um, it says here that um, by, faith, by faith Moses left the land of Egypt not fearing the king's anger. I'm sure he was scared of the king. I mean, it tells us that he was. He, ha he ran away because he didn't want Pharaoh to catch him. But he also trusted God. It said he kept doing, he kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who's invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and sprinkle the blood on the doorposts so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. Moses led the people. He struggled with it. Um, when you read the story of Moses, you realise that He's not a confident speaker. He, he lacks that self-confidence. Uh, he even says to God, oh, don't, don't ask me to speak to Pharaoh. I can't speak to Pharaoh. You know, I, I'm just going to trip over myself. I'm not going to do it eloquently. You know, he doesn't have faith in himself. But God continues to have faith in him. And because of that, God brings alongside support for Moses and Moses does lead the people. He leads them out of the land and he, whenever the people keep on turning their back on God, Moses is a strong leader and he keeps their eyes focused upon God. I wonder how many times we waver. How many times do we struggle? How many times do we say to God, I can't keep going? If we're honest, I'm sure we do it quite a lot. I am sure that we do struggle in our faith we do but God wants us to keep on going that's the whole point of this passage which is here the author keeps on giving an examples of people who kept going in faith and they didn't keep going in their own strength but they kept going in God's strength that's the whole point of Moses and, and, and look it says look Moses Moses set up Moses told us about the Passover he encouraged you to, to, to sacrifice an animal, sprinkle the blood on the, on the doorpost and on the lintels um, so the angel of death will pass over. And look what happened. The angel of death did pass over. And yes, the people did escape from Egypt. And look now, God brought you through all that journey. And look at what he's done for you now. Look at how he is still faithful and he doesn't let go of you. And he keeps on reminding in verse 29, it was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were all drowned. That's a dramatic image, isn't it? Of the Red Sea parting, the children of Israel going through. And as the Egyptians are chasing through in their, in their chariots and with all their horses and with all their soldiers. And, and if they had caught the Israelites that would have killed so many of them and brought the rest back. And the waters come back because God had held up the waters and then God brought the waters back. And they were drowned because they were chasing God's people. Because Pharaoh was so hard of heart and wouldn't listen. How often do we not listen, even though God is talking to us? How often do we dig our heels in and say, oh, God, I'm fed up, I do want to do this. You know, and, and maybe at times God has to chastise us or God has to remind us that he is God and that we are his people and that he wants us to follow him. I'm sure all of us at times can identify um, times in our life whenever we knew, we know or we knew God was taking us in one direction and we were going in another direction and we were dragging our feet uh, and something happened to make us stop and to listen to God and to say, okay, God, I'm going to follow you. Because at the end of the day, God knows what is best for us. 
Imagine the children of Israel had turned around and gone back into Egypt again. What would have happened to them? They would have been enslaved. Certainly more of their children would have been killed. And probably at the end of the day, the nation would have been wiped out. If they had gone back. But they didn't. Moses encouraged them to keep on going. I wonder, are you a Moses to anybody? I wonder, do you encourage anyone to keep going? Maybe you do it knowingly. Maybe there's somebody who is younger in the faith uh, and you are the, a person who they look to, someone who, who they can rely upon. I wonder if you're a Moses and in what you do, you encourage people to keep going. Or I wonder, do you know who your Moses is? Who do you turn to for encouragement? Who do you turn to whenever you need somebody to put you back on the right track? Um, and, and who do you talk to seeking their wisdom? Maybe the minute you feel like the children of Israel, maybe you feel like probably the, the people who the author of Hebrews is writing to, you, you feel like you're about to give up. And you feel maybe discouraged and you want to turn around and head back. God's saying to you, don't. He's saying to you, keep going. I'm with you. I haven't left you. I'm never going to leave you. I'm always there for you. You know, at those times, whenever we struggle, we, God just needs us to reach out and to realise that he is there. And by doing that, he encourages us to keep going. You know, we're at this time, especially, we're encouraging people to keep going with COVID, to keep going with lockdown. I was having a conversation before this on, on, on Zoom, and, you know, we're, we're fed up with this, aren't we? Yet the government are telling us to keep going, the end is in sight. Well, the same is true for us. If we are Christians, we, believe, we firmly believe that an end is in sight to all of our suffering. And that's whenever we go home to glory with God. But in the meantime... We keep going. We keep living our life. We keep living for God. We keep reaching out. We keep telling others through our actions, through our deeds, through our words, how much God loves them. We are called to be Moses. We are called to be those who will encourage, those who will lead. And yeah, we sometimes will get it wrong. Moses got it wrong. Moses didn't get to enter the promised land because he had done wrong we all do things that are wrong but God still holds us and our God is still faithful so no matter what you're struggling with at this time know that you're not alone know that God is with you know that he wants to encourage you and wants you to keep going know that he wants you to do the same for others let's pray together Father, thank you again for the challenges of your word. Thank you for the, the image of Moses and what, and what he did and how he kept going, how through all the ups and downs he, he kept leading your people, he kept encouraging them. He, whenever they wanted to turn back, he kept them facing forward. Lord, help us to keep facing forward. Help us to encourage those around us to face forward. And Lord, whenever we struggle, help us to know who to look to um, to, to encourage us to keep facing towards you and Lord please bring alongside each one of us a Moses who will encourage us and at the same time Lord help us to see who we can be a Moses to because Father we know that whenever you said to go and disciple your people that's what the model is that we help each other and we help to teach and to guide so that we all keep our eyes firmly fixed on you so Lord thank you Continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks to the folks on Facebook who've joined in. Um, I'm going to shut down Facebook now and we're going to transfer it over onto Zoom for a time of prayer. Um, so thank you for watching. I'm going to be back again next Wednesday to do just a strip Bible study. And then the following Wednesday, so two weeks from today, that'll be the same again where we do Bible study followed by prayer time. Um, do the Bible readings in the morning at half nine as usual and you can either join at that time or join later on in the day. Uh, and folks remember if there's any prayer requests, anything which is troubling you at this time, please don't feel free please to pick up the phone, the phone me or send me a message and know that we are praying for you and, and in any way that we can help please let us know. 
But to everybody who's on Facebook, um, take care, God bless, and see you soon. Bye for now.